Bolts Nation, welcome back to another episode of the Bolts Block Party. I am your host, Greg Wolf, always joined by the ever stout Braden Coburn. And we are excited to welcome this gentleman into today's episode. D Rad, Darren Radish, joins us here. Wrap around Radish, as Paul Kennedy calls him on the Bally broadcast. Welcome to the uh, Block Party. We thank you for taking time out of your very busy day to be with us. Thank you for having me. So uh, I don't know if you knew this, uh, D-Rad, but uh, anybody that has, uh, I guess, in the last three or four months that's come on the Bolts Block Party has gone on to either score a goal or get points. It started actually with Glennie, and then uh, Connor Sherry gets back in the lineup, gets two assists. Then Wadi comes on the show, scores. ABB comes on the show, scores. And then we book you for the show. Uh, Breezer tells us you're coming on. And then the very next game, he scores two goals. How many goals have you scored up to this point? Uh, that was my third. Third. Yeah. But two in one night well, because of the block party. Our <laughs> list is full now. All the guys are, they're just, they're, we had to lock the door. The guys are trying to get in here to get on the show. Yeah. So, so that's kind of, uh, we wanted to spread that around the locker room that, hey, you know, if you're maybe in a little slump or you haven't scored a goal lately, come on the block party. So again, thank you for joining well, us. Well, when you did that, um, I was also watching, uh, Vancouver game. And it was funny because Ian Cole, you played with yeah, last year, yeah. he scored his first of the year. And he said to the media, he said, my new year's resolution was to score a goal. Cause he hadn't scored a goal sure. to that point. So I was wondering, was that also a new year's resolution of yours? Yeah, that was something uh, I've been thinking about quite, quite a bit this season, you know, didn't, uh, didn't score one for the first half of the season there. So um, to, to get one finally and just get the monkey off your back, exactly. right? Yeah, I just get the monkey wanna, off. I didn't want to pull it off. And uh, yeah, in but you've been you've been you've been, uh, you've been uh, uh, lots of offense. You've been up in the play a bunch and creating things. So, but mm -hmm. to just to put it in the back of the net, I'm sure felt well. Yeah, it was uh, it was awesome. You probably saw my face in, in yeah. some of the videos <laughs> and the reaction. Uh, I was pretty pumped for that. And to get to uh, was, uh, was kind of surreal. so. What's your mindset at that point? Do you feel like holy crap? I'm I could actually possibly get a hattie tonight. I mean, does that cross your uh, mind at all? I was out there for the the empty netter, and uh, I just. I, I didn't get the chance to go for the empty netter, but, uh, you know, I just had to make sure I won my battle and got it sure. over to Hedy that got it to Heggy. So, but was that crossing your mind at any point? A little bit. Okay. I only had one. I had one in junior. Um, and you know, it was still pretty cool. I got an empty netter and it was actually in the playoffs too. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool. Even better. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, let's go back to the beginning. Cause again, um, you know, our fan base, we like to kind of give the backstory of, of the, of the, uh, the journey, so to speak of how you got to this point. So take us back to where it all began, you know, playing rollerblade hockey on the basement floor of your parents' house, uh, to playing minor league hockey for the Toronto Marlboros and the Erie Otters, uh, as well as your relationship with your brother, Taylor, obviously you guys both playing a lot of sports, lacrosse, golf, baseball, hockey, but Take us back to, to where it all started and your love for the sport. Yeah. Yeah. It started uh, when we were, I think I was two, he was just born. I was kind of, I had a golf club, but I was using it as a hockey stick. And um, yeah, when, when we got older, we were rollerblading in the basement. We kind of, any sport that was kind of, any pretty much any sport we, we played, we did on the driveway. I remember we used to do like the Olympics on the driveway. We'd speed skate around the driveway. We would do some ski jumping, you go down and jump and see how far, how far you could go. We played baseball, kind of did everything. So, um, you know, hockey was the one, one sport that we kind of both fell in love with. My dad was pretty adamant on wanting to put us to play hockey. So, um, yeah, kind of started in the basement and then it grew to minor hockey and we both played, uh, a year up, um, when we were younger. And, uh, and then eventually, like you said, I went to the Marlboros when I was, I think minor Adam. So that was eight years old or something. Mm. Uh, played there for seven years and, uh, you know, had a great time, met a lot of great friends, played, I think my minor midget team we had, I think we have like five or six guys that are in the NHL right now. So, um, you know, that was awesome. And then ended up playing, uh, in Erie and junior. And, you know, that was probably one, one of my best times of my life, you know, got a lot of good friends from there and got to play with my brother in junior hockey, which, uh, is not too rare. So, um, yeah, that was, that was awesome. And then, uh, you know, just kind of trying to grind the pro game. So the last seven years. So did your dad play or your mom yeah, play? Or like you know, where, my, where did that whole thing come from? Like, why was your dad so adamant that like hockey got, you, yeah. you, I know they probably as parents, they were probably like, get these kids like busy, get them out yeah, of the house. Yeah. I'm sure like get them into everything. Yeah. My dad, my dad didn't play any, uh, professional or semi-professional hockey. He just kind of played beer league. And my mom would always tell us stories. My dad, he was a bigger man. So he'd like to, you know, get a little bit of scraps uh, here and there. So my mom would go to the 
canteen and order French fries and gravy. And by the time the French fries and gravy were done, my dad had gotten two fights and was kicked out of the game. And the <laughs> home, so. His post game yeah, meal. Exactly. But, but if you talk ready. to any beer leaguer, I'll tell you what, they treat that beer league games like it's like right. Stanley Cup final yeah, anyway. Sure. Yeah. They take it pretty serious. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. But, um, you said, you know, you guys played good. Well, I mean, you were the first player in OHL history that simultaneously won the Max Kaminsky Trophy as the OHL Defenseman of the Year. This is the 2016-17 season, so not terribly long ago, as well as the Leo Lalonde Memorial Trophy as Overage Player of the Year. That's some pretty remarkable stuff. I mean, there's no other company but you in that category. So yeah, your game obviously must have been next level. I think Cali actually won that same award uh, back in 05, 06. Um, but you were also named to the Memorial team alongside your brother. And didn't you also play with Connor McDavid? Yeah. Yeah. I played with Connor actually in minor hockey for two or three years. We always played against each other because he was always a year up against us. So um, the last two or three years of minor hockey, uh, he came over to the Marlies and we got to play together for those three years. And then we got drafted to Erie together and he was one of the first phone calls after uh, the GM called me and told me that I was drafted there. So um, got to know him pretty well. And, you know, we still we still say hi to each other when we're when we see each other. And we're not too close as we were before. But, um, you know, guys move on. But we're, we're still pretty friendly. And, uh, you know, when we saw them in, in Edmonton, we kind of got catched up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and, you did. Uh, and got to say hi. So. I mean, how was that for you? Because I know you've probably wanted to play against him, mm -hmm. knowing the superstar status that he is. But you guys ended their eight game win streak. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did that feel playing against him? Yeah, it's, uh, it's scary a little bit with when he's coming down the ice, but, uh, you know, you just got to trust your yourself and trust your game. And, and, you know, Connor's one of the best players in the world. So I'm um, just being, uh, being able to get on the ice with him. And, and like you said, stop their eight game win streak. That's something that we wanted to do. Yeah. So not to talk too much about junior hockey, but, sure, but let's go when, when, when I was going over some of your eerie teams, mm -hmm. And the players that were on this team, yeah. I, I, honestly, I, I'll be, I was floored. Dumbfounded, yeah. actually. It was, it was crazy. You like, got names. Connor McDavid, mm -hmm. Connor Brown, Adam Pelsch, Burakovsky, Strom, McDermott, the Brimcat, Marchment, your brother, Lord. Eric Chernak, yeah. Warren Fogle, Anthony Sorelli. And I left like a, probably like yeah. five or six other guys off yeah. there that I was just like insane. Like a, uh, it's like a Mecca, I guess would be a good yeah. term. And then your coach, Chris Knobloch is the head coach the Edmonton Oilers now, like mm -hmm. what was it about Erie that you guys were able to recruit so many great players and how was that for development? Cause you're practicing against basically mm -hmm. guys that are, you know, these are really good players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when I first got in there, uh, Sherry Baston was the GM and, and Dave Brown was the assistant GM and, you know, they did a really good job of, of finding good players that they drafted. And then they obviously traded for a lot of good guys when, when we were good. So, um, yeah, you know, the, I got to give credit to to Sherry and to Dave. They they did a lot of a lot of good work in finding a lot of good guys. And, and like you said, in practice, it was it was fun. Like we everyone battled, everyone loved trying to be the best. And I think that's what got us eventually to be the best team in the OHL my last year because those practices, you know, it's it, you you you've, you've been there. You know, practices. It, it's you don't want to lose against your teammates, and and I think that's probably the thing that pushed us over the edge is when we're in those tight games, you got the, a lot of that experience in practice and, and wanting to be the best. So it kind of just fed into games. Yeah. It's like, I think that practice is, is obviously where you grow a bunch. And now you get to, you're in the Tampa Bay lightning, you're practicing against Steven Kitt Stamkos, Kucherov. Right. And these guys, you know, they don't mess around the mm -hmm. best players in the world. They practice the hardest. And, and I'm from everything I've heard about Connor McDavid and, and a lot of these guys on the list, these guys practice hard. You mm -hmm. have to practice hard to get in the NHL. So I'm sure that enabled your growth to just kind of continue to grow being around. It's like being around all these great players just pushes everybody up. Mm -hmm. The cream raises to the top. Yeah. hundred percent. It was uh, it was a great environment to be in. And, and I think in Erie too, the, we didn't really go out too much and cause we were, we weren't of age because the age, the age limit was 21. So it was more just, you know, hang out with each other and kind of build that bond that that we all had. And, and, you know, we're, we still, every, everyone you see on that team, we still talk here and there. And, um, you know, it was just a, it was a great environment to be in. Okay. So for you personally, you're in Erie, you guys have these great teams. The team is building, uh, it's your draft year. Mm -hmm. And you go undrafted right. and there's a, we've talked to a bunch of guys, whether it's ABB, right. whether it's Glenn Denning, right. whether it's Yanni Gord, these, all these guys that have, are in the NHL now that have established themselves like yourself that went undrafted. What was going through your head? How, what did you feel like at that time? 
I was a little disappointed. Um, I didn't end up going to the draft. I stayed home and, uh, you know, just kind of watched on the, on the TV screens and on the computer. And, um, like I said, it was disappointing, but you know, I, I, I knew I had a belief in me and that, you know, I, I'm as good as these guys that are getting drafted and are getting the chance to play. So I just had to, to make sure that, you know, I, I can do that and just keep pushing and eventually your time will come and, and, and eventually you'll get your shot. And when you get your shot, make sure you're ready for it. Um, and like I said, going back to junior is just making sure that you were ready to, to have that opportunity when it did come. And like, I, I didn't make the team my first year in, in Erie as well. And, and then when I did finally get to play, I just, you know, tried to build on it day by day. And, and, and that's kind of the same thing I've done in pro is I've never really been given an opportunity. So when I do get an opportunity, just make sure I'm, uh, you know, using it. So you, even, even, I was going to say, even though you, you weren't uh, drafted, did you still receive invitations though to like some of the training camps? Yep. Yeah. I went to LA my first eligible year. Uh, and then I ended up going to San Jose, St. Louis, and then I ended up signing an AHL deal after junior, uh, with Chicago. So did that leave a chip on your shoulder? Like, do you I still carry so, that yeah. around with you? Yeah, now? a little bit. I, that's, I, I talked to Glenny about that. You know, he wasn't drafted and we talk about that all the time, how, how hard it is to, to get your foot in the door and to, to eventually, you know, move on and, and be here. So, um, you know, it's something that, uh, that I think about all the time and, and, I just try to take it. It's not even a foot in the door. You have almost have to knock the door down. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. You you pretty much have to say, Hey, I'm here and I'm, I'm here to stay. So that's, and he has, I mean, obviously. So go ahead. Yeah. So sorry to kind of stay on this, but I wanted to, cause your situation is so unique and I find it amazing. Your brother's two years younger than you. Uh, You guys are playing a year together Mm -hmm. and he goes through the draft process and he does get drafted. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm sure you're probably his biggest fan and he's mm-hmm. your biggest fan. You guys are, are supportive of each other. What was that f- feeling like just to see him go through that? Um, and then you being a, almost on a kind of a different level, your support system for mm-hmm. him. Yeah, it was awesome. He, uh, he was drafted by Tampa and I, I remember I still talk to him about him about this all the time is we went up to the suite. Um, you know, you got to meet all the GM and all the staff and all that after the, after they're drafted, but I'm sitting there kind of in the, in the seat watching the draft. Cause you know, I, I still could get drafted. It was my last chance to get drafted and I knew I wasn't getting drafted, but you never know how sure. that goes. You were no overage that year, right? Yeah. So it would be my last, my yeah. last draft year. So, um, I could have been drafted. I wasn't, but, uh, you know, it's, it was my brother's day and I, I couldn't have been happier for him. You know, he, he worked so hard to, to get to that point and, uh, you know, just to see it kind of fully pay off. It was, uh, it was awesome for my family and I. Did you ever at any point in your junior career think, you know, maybe I should, you know, cause a lot of players after they go through the junior ranks, think about Canadian university. Mm-hmm. Did that ever cross your mind? And the only reason I ask is because I had a roommate, I played in the WHL and my roommate was Cody McLeod who ended up, he had a, a really great NHL career. And I remember sitting in his room one night and he had a whole pamphlet and it was all these Canadian universities and we're going over it. And I just remember him looking at me and being like, you know what? I just can't, I, I don't want to even think about <laughs> yeah. this. I, I'm going to make, I'm going to go for it. I'm going right. to, I'm going to play pro hockey. I'm going to make the NHL. I'm going to bang the door down. Did you ever have those conversations or were you pretty set? Cause I know you had a lot of points as you're over age mm-hmm. here. So I'm sure there was opportunities, but did, did that ever creep into your mind? Uh, a little bit, you know, you get the pamphlets from the different universities and the coaches would text you and reach out and say, Hey, and all that stuff. So um, I think in the back of my mind, it was like, you know, this is my final year. It just kind of, you know, there's nothing to hold back. There's just go out, you know, play your best, try and try and show whoever it is what you can do and what you can bring. And, um, you know, I, I had an awesome year and uh, I was lucky enough to uh, sign with Rockford. And, you know, I think that, again, didn't get, get an NHL contract after that season and got an AHL contract. And I think what we went into that season as, you know, kind of like said, had a chip on my shoulder again and tried to earn what I thought I, I, I deserved. And, you know, I ended up getting an NHL contract after that. It's been, yeah, that was, um, good. that was like May 2018. Yeah. Yeah. So signed that deal with Chicago. Yeah. To your mm-hmm. deal. What role did coaches play in that whole thing? Cause mm-hmm. I know you ended up with Knobloch again mm-hmm. uh, with the Hartford Wolf back and, yeah. you know, what kind of role did that play? Did you, did, are these guys, um, do you give them a lot of credit or, you know, wh- where do you place them in your, your total development? Yeah, I think, I think coaches, like coaches put a lot, uh, they were, they're there to, to support you and to, to make sure you're feeling good and, and having a familiar face like Chris in Hartford, my, I think it was my fourth year or third year. Um, it was awesome. He did. I didn't really have to try and do too much or try to impress him. He knew what I could do and he knew, what the type of player I was. Um, 
And, you know, I even give credit back to uh, Jeremy Colleton and to, to Derek King when I was in Rockford. They, they kind of let you be your own and come in and just play your game and not worry too much about what, where you are in the lineup or whatever it is. It was just, you know, this is how you're playing. I think you can play better go out and play better. And that's just all it was. And it was just, it was all hockey. It was all business. And I, I give a lot of credit to the, the coaches in the minor leagues that, uh, that helped me get here. Yeah. Jeremy Colleton, he's an amazing story mm-hmm. too, as a coach. Yeah. 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 He was playing in Sweden. Mm-hmm. He had some concussion problems. He was going to come home and they asked him to like be a player coach kind yeah. of thing. And yeah. then, you know, next thing you know, it's like three or four years later, he's an NHL head coach. Yeah. It was quite, quite yeah. amazing. Yeah. He's a, he's a really, he, him and Chris, I, I, I kind of put in the same category. They're, they're both really smart guys. You know, they, I think they were both tough guys back in the day. So um, yeah, he, yeah. I, I know, I know Jeremy a little <laughs> yeah. bit. I, he's yeah. from Black Alberta. Uh, we used to hang out together, jump on his trampoline, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah. he, he, he was, uh, he was a hard nosed guy for yeah. sure. Yeah. And once again, just goes to show that Kobe is literally six degrees of separation from any person related <laughs> to the National Hockey League and hockey in general. So it's a small world. Yeah, it's it is. World. I mean, you really make me feel that way. So obviously you go, so you go to a two-year deal, the Blackhawks, you were later uh, traded to the Rangers in 2019. And then obviously your journey here to the Tampa Bay Lightning, you transitioned in that time from forward to defenseman. How was that transition for you? And what, what made you want to make that transition? Yeah, I, I played forward up until minor midget. Yep. Um, and Ken Strong was my coach and he, uh, he brought my dad and I in, into the, to a room one day and he was just like, you know what, I think, I think Darren would be a good defenseman. You know, he sees the ice very well. And I wasn't the goal scorer, like most forwards want to be. I was kind of, like I said, I like to be in front of the net, take face offs, be kind of the third guy high. So, um, he said, I think Darren would be a great defenseman. And, you know, I, I didn't really think about the OHL or anything like that. It was just, you know, I wanted, I wanted to play a lot and we had a lot of good forwards. We had like Connor McDavid, we had Sam Bennett, you know, um, I'm trying to think of the other guys who are on there. We had a lot of good guys that, sure. are, that are in the NHL now. <laughs> There's so. an all-star team There's too right many now. guys to think it's of. an all-star team. Um, that and, Toronto league, man. Yeah, oh my gosh. Real. So just to, to go back and have a chance to play a lot and, yep. and, and, you know, show what I can do. Um, it was, it was probably the right decision at the time and, and I'm happy I, uh, I did it and, you know, being a defenseman, it's, it's a lot different than being forward, but, uh, you know, you get to jump up and you, you get to see the ice. Uh, I think it's amazing. The guys that can do it and, uh, and late in your, late in your development too, because mm-hmm. it's, it's such a different thing. Yeah. I, I remember, uh, when Brent Burns, so I played world juniors with Brent Burns and he was a forward mm-hmm. and a couple of years later, he's playing defense in the NHL. And I was just like amazed by that. And I think it just speaks to your athleticism, mm-hmm. your hockey knowledge, your hockey IQ to be able to make that kind of switch. Yeah, it's not, it's definitely not easy. It's, uh, it's something that you gotta, it's, I'm still learning, I guess now, like, and it's been I mean, 12, 12 years now. So um, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop for sure. <laughs> so the other night again, uh, the two goal game um, against our former buddies, uh, Pat Maroon and, and uh, Bogo in Minnesota, you know, talk about that night and why it was clicking for you. Actually, Dave Anderchuk on the broadcast said that your game style reminded him of, of his player, uh, Danny Boyle, the fact that you get in deep on those plays, but talk to us about that night and, and why everything was clicking for you in that game in Minnesota. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think that night was uh, it was good. I, I I was skating pretty well in the first period. I I think I made some some good plays and some good reads. And you know, it was just like you said, when you're feeling when you're feeling good, you, good things happen. So, um, like that first goal, I went to the net and I saw Gunny had the puck and I got a piece of it. And then the rebound was right there and like yeah. my eyes kind of lit up. I was like, okay, this this could be your first one coming here. So, um, just you know, got a good a good piece of it and it ended up going in the net. And then the second one kind of just kind of you know, just saw the play developing. And then, uh, I, I don't even know if I made a, a fake or not, but I think Fleury kind of thought I was going to shoot it and just saw the, the back door there. So I had to try and wrap it around That's there. That's a good move, man. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. so smooth and just your face. That's again the forward in him, right? Yeah, That's man. the forward in him. Yeah. <laughs> Driving it in deep. So you mentioned Victor Hedman, mm-hmm. um, you know, elite, uh, is the first word that comes to mind, but what have you learned most about playing alongside Victor Hedman? How, uh, how calm he is, you know, he's, he's a big guy and, and he can skate like the wind, but you know, when he has the puck, he's always, always has his head up, always, uh, trying to find the right play and he's always in the right position. So that's kind of the one thing I take from Victor is, you know, trying to emulate a little bit of that in my game is trying to make sure I'm in the right position and trying to make the right play, not just 
throw the puck out or just, you know, flip it, high flip it out. It's try and put it on a stick. And, you know, we got some really good forwards here. So if you can get the puck on their stick, there some good things are going to happen sure. when, uh, when they have it. So to kind of pivot against, against um, one of your old Tampa teammates, your brother, Taylor. Mm-hmm. So we had Luke Shin on the podcast, I think last year, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Last year. Yep. And we asked him about playing against his brother, Braden, mm-hmm. and if he would ever fight him. And he said, I would never fight my brother. Yeah. Um, what's your stance on that? Would you guys throw down ever? Well, hold on. Let me rephrase it. Can I, can I tee it up a little bit more? It has sure. a little bit more oomph. Let's say it's a Stanley cup game. It's a Stanley cup. Like it's a, in an important game and it's a pivotal moment in the game. Yeah, that's, that'd be tough. Um, I, I don't, I don't think I would. I, I, because you guys must the, have had scraps when you were younger, oh, we, for yeah, sure, we, right? We, like, I think we still we still fight now here when we see each other. Um, but yeah, I don't. My mom and my dad probably would not disown us, but they'd be they'd be yes. pretty upset if we fought. But um, I, depending on the situation, if I, 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 it'd be it'd be pretty tough to. Can it, you it might just be in the pelly uh, box looking no, across yeah. the ice and mom's <laughs> over there just bawling? Live yeah, live oh, live she she would be she'd be pretty upset. I, I think bet. if we fought. Who, if you did, who would win? Definitely me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Older brother attitude. He's, like bigger, he's bigger, but uh, you know, I, I think I can hold my own. I love it, man. All right. So also I, I read that um, you played with a Stamkos stick as a minor leaguer and now playing with him. Is that, has that been surreal for you? Have you talked to him about that? No, I haven't really talked to him about that. I kind of said it in passing and yeah. it's, it's just something, I guess, you know, he's been around for, for so long and, I guess all the kids now use the sticks that they, that they use back in the day. So, um, yeah, I, it was the kind of the curve I liked and, yep. uh, my dad ended up getting me that one and I just kind of bought it from, uh, from there on. So when you were growing up, were you a Toronto Maple Leafs fan? Uh, I was not anymore, but, uh, <laughs> Good answer. but uh, yeah, yeah. We, we'd always go to the Leaf games and, uh, my, my favorite player was Mike Richards. So, uh, I always would go watch him when he was uh, on the flyers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right on. So last year being in the playoffs mm-hmm. against Toronto, how yeah. was that? That was, that was, that was awesome. The, the first game coming out and that was my first time ever playing in, in Toronto too. So, um, game one was probably the most nervous I've ever been, but we got down to four defensemen and then it was just kind of, you know, you just got to go out and play or yep. you're going every other shift. And it was, uh, it was a pretty surreal moment. How many tickets did you have to buy? Uh, I only bought four for my parents and my brother and his wife. That's, my that's a good thing though, here. because yeah. playoff tickets in Toronto, well, so yeah. they get pretty pricey. Do you pricey. get the hookup at, like through the PA or do you have oh, to like, you know, no, people? no, no, you said no. no. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the here and the there. Players, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were sitting way up at the top too. I didn't, I didn't buy them. <laughs> you hadn't played very long. Yeah, exactly. So like, yeah. I said, I couldn't afford that by then. So. so why do you think the, the Syracuse crunch and the lightning um, together make such a great system? Uh, I think it's the, the staff that they had, you know, I, I had uh, Benoit for two years there and I, I, I loved, I loved him. I think he's a great coach. Um, I know they've moved on to to Joel and I've yeah. talked to the guys uh, down there and, you know, they, they love him as well. And they, they're both similar type coaches. You know, they, they expect a lot of you. And I think when the coach expects a lot of you, you are prepared for when you do, if you do come up to the NHL, because there is, there's a lot of demand when you are here and um, they do a good job of making sure you're ready and, and, you know, implementing the systems that they have here down there. So being one of the developmental success stories for the lighting, what do you tell, and there's a, there's a there's bunch a of young guys up here right now. Mm-hmm. Right. What do you tell those guys about trying to be able to stick here and, mm-hmm. and being able to kind of get your foot in the door? Yeah. I, I, I talked to Jack uh, Thompson pretty, pretty well throughout the last year and a half. We've become close and, you know, I got to know Emil pretty, pretty good the last couple of days. And, um, you know, I, I just tell them, you know, it's, you're going to have setbacks. You're going to, you're going to get kind of like, said punched, you know, punched in the face here and there, but you know, it's just how you respond. And, um, it's just how the league is. Yeah, the league, exactly, the league will yeah. humble you yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like, and you know, I've, I've seen that so far this, this start of the season, you know, that you have a good game, you have a bad game, but it's just how you, you go out the next, the next night and, and, and how you do. So I've, I, I've told them, you know, it's it, make sure you're doing the right things, working hard. Um, because the things that the coaches see and the, the management see are maybe they're not all the, the flashy highlights that everyone wants to see. Um, and if you're doing all, all those things here, like continuously, you know, they notice that and and eventually they'll, they'll reward you for that. And it's not, like I said, it's not all the, 
the flashy goals or the the plays that you make. It's maybe it's the, the battles you win in front of the net or in the corner, and and that's the that's the stuff that you need to do here because there's a lot of guys that uh, do that pretty well. So to shift a little bit back towards you and every player at different parts of their career are working on something. Can you kind of elaborate and tell us maybe what Darren Radish is working on right now? Yeah, I, I think I've always been trying to work on my skating. That's something that I, I probably can can work on for the rest of my life. But uh, um, yeah, I think skating's, skating's the one thing and then just, you know, trying to always be as strong as I can. I'm not the, not the biggest guy on the ice. So um, just making sure I'm ready for when there is some battles in, in the corners or in front of the net and, you know, just trying and making sure I'm in the right position uh, as always. All right. Before we get into fact or fiction presented by our friends at High Ally, uh, just a couple off cuff stuff now that we kind of got most of the hockey stuff out of the way. What's on uh, D Rad's Spotify playlist? Like what gets you uh, in game game mode? Uh, a lot of Jack Harlow and uh, okay. a lot of uh, Newfie music. I don't know if you guys have ever been out to Newfoundland, but uh, I love the the Irish stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what does that look for? I don't know. I, I just know that's not your vibe. <laughs> that's not my vibe, but I mean, yeah. Jack Harlow all day. Uh, what are some of your favorite uh, Tampa spots? I mean, you've been here long enough. Do you have like a favorite Italian spot? Uh, not too big into Italian, but uh, I really like Meat Market. We went there a couple of times Very so good. far. It's High Park. Really good. Yeah. All kind of all those restaurants Down in, there. in High Park is kind of uh, like your go-to. Is, yeah, exactly. Big steak guy. Uh, not too big steak guy. I kind of like, like to stay, uh, with some fish or some chicken day before games. Keep it light. Keep yeah. it light. Keep, it light. Keep protein yeah. light. Uh, something else we noticed, you know, we have some pretty solid, uh, moss, some pretty solid flow on our team. Mm -hmm. And you've kind of gone completely the opposite route with the no lettuce look. Is that by design? Is that by choice? Or is that just what God's given you? Uh, I think a bit of both. Okay. Uh, the last couple of years before I fully shaved it off, you know, I was kind of, every time I was coming to the rink, I was always getting chirped or there was always something being said about my hair. So, you know, I was just like, you know, finally enough is enough. And my fiance was just like, just shave it off and, and, and do it. And kind of, you know, I, I'm happy I did it. It's, sure. it's easy in the morning. I, I wake say, up, right? just throw a hat on or no hat and you're, you're ready to go in, in three, four minutes. So. so would you ever go the Michael Jordan route? I think he had like the laser treatment. So he never has to shave it. It's oh. just like, yeah. I, laser hair removal, you mean? Yeah. I, if, 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 if I could find that, I don't know where, I don't, I've never seen that before, but uh, it's something it I'll exists. probably, uh, probably look for. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps it even easier. Yeah. All right. So fact or fiction presented by our friend, at high lie. So pretty, pretty simple stuff here, Darren. It's oh, basically, we forgot to ask him though. We forgot right. to ask him. We, we heard that you are a big uh, fact of the day guy. Oh yeah. yeah fun so facts. before we fa fun, fun facts, fa fun day. facts with Raddy. Okay. So w <laughs> please entertain us. What's the fun fact of the day today? Oh, fun fact of the day. Um, Baker Mayfield, uh, it is bonus for making the playoffs. That's the he only did. thing I can think of. Yeah. There we go. A yeah. milli. Okay. Yeah. I love yeah. the fun facts. Fun yeah. fact of the day. Yeah. Maybe There's highlights whole, to get on this. Every team's got a guy that brings in a fun yeah. fact of the day. <laughs> well, thank you for the fun fact of the day. Now it's your turn. So fact or fiction, basically these are either true or false. Okay. You're a better golfer than you are a fisherman. Oh, yes. True. Okay. And what's up with the Christmas Day Invitational at the house? Oh, you guys saw that. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> we were at my, at my aunt and uncle's house. They have, there's this, kind of this field in the back. Um, and there's probably about five or six of the dads that live on the the street and they all have their lawn mowers and they cut like nine holes, like kind of from maybe 30 yards to 90 yards of just, you can kind of, kind of go wherever you want. And one Christmas we were over there and it was like, maybe it was probably like 60 degrees. And we were like, you know, let's just go play some golf. And we played golf and that was, uh, it was a Christmas day. Love that. Christmas I, day I heard you're a hell of a golfer. I had a caddy that was raving about you <laughs> driving greens and just yeah. like absolute Pound bombs ball. on the golf course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I kind of like golf more than hockey, but, uh, you know, hockey pays a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit more for, for how good I am. So, so um, maybe uh, long drive, career, long drive. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll get into that. Is it long drive? Is that your specialty? Yeah. Long drives yeah. or yeah. you got the short game to go with it? Uh, I think I got an all. Okay, overall, you got game, it all. Yeah. You got yeah. it all. That's yeah, a, that's a very subtle and humble way to say you got it all. Uh, it's plus two right now. Not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> I just <laughs> I just choked on the microphone. <laughs> 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 all right, fact or fiction? Uh, you recently took engagement photos with a shiner. I did. Yes, fact. Yeah, fact. Was your your fiance was okay with that? You didn't want to postpone was, it a week. She was upset. 
uh, we kind of postponed it twice. So it was kind of the third time, like, let's just get it over with. Okay. And it was actually the night before I got uh, hit into the boards and I got 12 stitches in my eyes. So, oh, yeah. During the hockey season, there's just never a good time. Yeah. Never yeah. a good time. And Lesson Photoshop's learned. amazing. Photoshop's, Photoshop's amazing. Photoshop can uh, They can even can put a full that. head of hair on yeah. you. you know? Yeah, I've, I've definitely seen that picture so far uh, on the internet. People putting hair into my head. <laughs> Fact or fiction? I, I want the Photoshop to put some color back like, in my yeah, hair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do have hair dye, just so yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, Fact or fiction, Darren Radish, the guys in the locker room tend to call you Daryl. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Why? Uh, that started my first year in Rockford, a guy named Victor Svedberg. He, uh, he didn't know my name. He just known, knew me by Ratty. Um, and the masseuse there, uh, Mikey Harling, he always called me Daryl as a joke. And he eventually, Victor thought my name was Daryl because he called me so much by Daryl. And I had to tell him my name's actually Darren. And I told Bogo that when, when I first got up here and the first thing he did was tell everyone you're calling you're calling Darryl. him yeah. Daryl now, so it kind of stuck. What a great story. Ryan Callahan, when Derek Lalonde was here as an assistant coach, he called him Dan for like till Christmas. <laughs> and when we finally had to tell him like his name's not Dan. <laughs> <Right>. yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, keeping it going here. Uh, you technically beat Nick Perbix in the Lightning's face-off drawing contest when tasked with blindly drawing the Seattle Kraken's logo. Yeah, that's true. That's a fact. Yeah, that's fact. It was childish and looked creepy, yeah. but it still, I think, yeah, that was, was way better. better than what Nick did. Congrats to yeah, you on that, you. by the way. Yeah. And finally, fact or fiction: you and your brother were named to the 2015 Mastercard Memorial Cup All Star Team. Uh, I was thinking it was 17. That's fiction. I yeah, wanted to see yeah, if he, yeah. Yeah. he got it. Yeah. He's I on it. it. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. I just wanted to see if he was yeah. on top of his game. Anyways, he's on top of his game, Kobe. He is, and uh, he is Darren Radish. And uh, we thank you for taking the time out. I know our time blew by, but uh, that's when you're having good conversation. We we really do appreciate you taking the time. And uh, we wish you the best of luck on this uh, endeavor and uh, look for great things from you moving forward. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you to our friends once again at High Life for powering another awesome episode of the Bolts Block Party. And Kobe and I will be back with another episode next week. You guys have a good one.